welcome back to the channel and today I am being challenged to build the most incredible rock crawler I can build to accomplish this insane course. Now, can we just appreciate how much detail went into just the garage alone? Uh, this challenge was built by Gretzenson, and it looks like we have an amazing garage here that is all organized with all kinds of stuff. It's a very organized garage. Look at all these chests that are organized with all kinds of uh, categorized parts and things. But our goal is to use the tools at our disposal to build a rock crawler capable of traversing this course that I think is progressively harder as you go on. Like, look at this. But not only, oh no, not only do we actually have to traverse the course and make it to the end, but we have to do it without moving any of these red cones. Because I think, yeah, you can see there is a sensor underneath all of these cones. And if you make it all the way to the finish without uh, moving any of the cones, then you will win. But if you have any of the cones moved from their original location, oh, actually, I think this is the end right here. Yeah, we must have to make it through here. But look at this stuff. We go all over and under the mountain and through the mountain. This is a beautifully designed course. It looks amazing. Like, look at this stuff. We're, we're basically doing rock core. Look at these rails. Okay, so we have a very, very particular set of dimensions that we have to work with, apparently. Um, here, let me get back to the beginning over here. This is a shortcut. Now, there are two options. Technically, I could use this pre-built vehicle and try to do it with uh, this thing, which I think is... Uh, Oh, look at how slow it goes. Okay, well, this is actually giving me some information on how I could possibly build my vehicle. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this thing is capable of doing this course. Um, but the challenge is, of course, it's not just doing the course. It's not, it's doing it without hitting the cones. All right, so let's get started strategizing here. I'm gonna get some building blocks. I'm definitely gonna be using, this is the heaviest material right here, concrete three. I'm gonna use this as the bottom base of my uh, vehicle chassis because we, we want a low center of mass so we don't flip over when these rocks are tilting us every which way. And then for a lighter material, I'm gonna go with the extruded metal block. You can see the weight difference between these two materials. I was gonna go with wood because it is super light, but I just don't think it's gonna look right. All right, what about like wheels and stuff? What do we have for those things? Oh, we got tools here. Yeah, I might need my lift for this. All right now, let's see how wide this wheelbase is. Okay, this wheelbase is 12 blocks wide, so that is gonna be essential to be able being able to traverse some of those balance obstacles. Oh, and I just realized this white line is actually, I guess, the suggested dimensions. This is exactly 12 blocks. So if I build within this white square, uh, I should be fine. Oh, look at all these wedges. We have a, a chest dedicated to just wedges. Gotta love the support for Wedge Gang here. Oh, and here. Oh, we can, we can see the whole outside of the course with the map view here. All right, well, let's get building. Now, the tough thing with rock crawlers is you want ground clearance because you're gonna have all these rocks underneath you, but you also want a low center of gravity. And those two things are kind of at odds with each other. So here's my plan for that. I'm gonna have a lot of weight at the front and a lot of weight at the back, but then I'm gonna have a center section that is lifted. So then I'll be able to like get over things better, I hope. All right, so we got the wheels up at the front right here with a big block of concrete. And then I'm leaving some uh, space in the middle down to the back. And here is where I've been debating back and forth. Do I want four wheel steering or not? Because I did notice that this thing does not have four wheel steering. But I kind of think like the back end, you might need to control it sometimes. So I'm going to try to add a system here that is going to allow me to enable and disable rear wheel steering. It's not going to be as responsive as the front wheels, but I think if we just use it when we need it, it might end up coming in handy at times. All right, now I am perfectly within the bounding box, so hopefully this should be good. All right, so I got my level five seat here, and this level five seat allows me to adjust the steering angle of these things. So uh, let's see, is 60 degrees going to be too much? Let's also slow down the steering a little bit. Oh, that's a lot, and they're backwards. All right, that is a lot, and the front end interferes a little bit. So let's do that. There we go. Oh, and now the back, the back end also interferes a little bit, so we need to have... How is this looking? Okay, we do hit a little, you know, 60 degrees. This seems a little bit too much. Let's go with like 50 degrees and slow down the speed a lot. That feels like it's pretty controllable. 
Oh yeah, so now the back wheels. So I'm gonna have this hooked up. These these are actually gonna, this has to be really fast because I want it to uh, respond. So I'm gonna have sensors that detect when this thing turns. I know these sensors aren't centered, but that's because I have an even with the vehicle and the, the bearing is not gonna be able to be centered. All right, so now when I turn right or left, you can see these sensors also get triggered. So I'm gonna need some logic. I know I saw logic somewhere. So now when the sensor gets detected and this button is on, that is the only time that these logic gates are going to activate. So this button has to be on for the back steering to become active. And the way that I intend the back steering to work is I will have a left steering controller and a right steering controller. So the right steering controller will turn those bearings. The left steering controller will turn those bearings. And that is gonna turn these by 50 degrees. And some people, whenever I do this, some people ask, how do I get the uh, the one degree adjustments in Scrap Mechanic? Because when you just drag it normally, it goes in 15 degree increments. But if you hold down shift while you drag, then you get one degree increments. So there's your answer for that. Okay, so now when I steer left, you can see now my back wheels will also go, and I actually feel like 50 degrees might be too much. And then when I steer right, so there we go. And then if I undo the switch, you can see my back wheels go back to normal. So then I can just kind of lead my front end where I want it to go. And uh, the back end will just follow. But in the event that I do need my back end to do something special, at least I have that. All right, I think I have the basic functionality of this thing down now. Um, how's this wheel base looking? I think that looks good. The ground clearance looks pretty good too. Well, let's say, oh, see, oh, see, that is why right there. That is why I wanted the uh, the belly of this thing to kind of be off the ground, because look at that. Even though this technically, uh oh. Oh, look at that though. All right, don't worry, I can, um, I can make some adjustments. This is a good little practice ramp here. I like that. This is where wedges are gonna come into play. All right, look at that difference with the wedges. We suddenly have the ground clearance, perfect. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more aesthetic wedge changes to this thing and uh, let's get this thing on the road or off the road. All right, I did a little bit more aesthetics to this thing. Not great aesthetics, but just something. So better than nothing. And uh, I painted this thing up, so let's go ahead and get to the start over here. Feels very slow right now, but I think when we're on the mountain, this is not gonna feel slow at all. All right, so I guess when I just hit this white switch, we go ahead and start. So the door is open. I wanna turn my rear steering off for now, and let's see how we do here. Oh, I just remembered the cones. I gotta avoid all these cones. All right, how's my ground clearance looking? This is good. I intentionally had my front wheels stick past my front like bumper area because I actually didn't want the bumper to bump into the rocks. We actually want the wheels to catch anything. And oh no, you know what? This is a spot where I'm gonna want my four wheel steering. Yep, get my back end out away from that cone there. Okay, here we go. We're doing good so far. This feels really good. I'm happy with my ground clearance decisions, and oh boy, here we go. I just realized I can't just go here. I gotta make sure my wheels are aligned. All right, there we go. This is just the easy stuff right now. We're already starting with these balance beam things, though. All right, look at this. This is so cool. <gasps> I thought I was just about to tip over. Oh, I kind of feel like I'm tipping over. Okay, no, we're good. This is good. Okay, this is kind of sketchy. This is really sketchy, actually. My wheels are... Are my back wheels wider than my front wheels? No. No, they're not. They're not. We're good. Okay. There we go. All right, here is the spot where I'm going to definitely enable my rear wheel steering, because look at this turn. Wait, look at this turn? Oh, no, that cone. Wait, how am I supposed to... Am I too long? Did I make this too long? Actually, with this... I'm so glad now I went with the four-wheel steering thing. I really thought that it was going to be one of those things that I did and I just wasn't going to end up using, but it is so useful to be able to turn that on and off. Okay, how do I line up on this, though? Should I just go for it? All right, here we go. I'm just going. This lined up really well, actually. That was good. Okay. Now we gotta go down this way. Look at that, almost hit that cone there. Okay, this looks like it's actually gonna be hard to line up. Like really hard to line up. <gasps> almost hit the cone. If I hit one cone, I just don't finish.
I need to get my back end out there. Oh, this is so sketchy. My back end isn't lined up very well yet. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna disable my rear wheel steering so I can just do the front wheels. All right, that's good. All right. All right, just go, 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 go. Watch the cones. This is such a cool design for a course. Okay, what's going on with this? Okay, oh, there's a switch. All right, uh, hit this switch. This is cool. Okay, so I think I feel like I'm doing really good so far. I would hate it if I hit like the last cone. That would be so discouraging. All right. This looks pretty simple. Really close to those cones. Oh, that cone up there is sneaky. Oh, this is steep too. And there's a big turn here. All right, I'm enabling four-wheel steering now. Gotta get around this corner without hitting that other cone. Yeah, that was good. Oh, the four-wheel steering is working out so well. I'm so proud of it. All right, turning it off now. We do not want the back wheels to steer as I'm ad gently adjusting my front end here. Look at this. This is such a cool course. I want to get better views of like it going over this stuff, but I need to, I need to see my wheel alignment. All right, this part, this is a tough turn to not hit these cones because I'm like not even off the beams yet. <gasps> this is such a tough turn. All right, now I'm enabling four wheel steering. Look at that. Look at that. This is, I made a good rock crawler. Very happy with the performance of this right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm keeping four wheel steering for this for sure. We're doing a U-turn right here, like a hairpin U-turn. Yeah, without four wheel steering, there's no way I would have been able to clear this. Oh, oh, no, 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 don't tip over. All right, I'm good. I'm good. Disabling four wheels. <gasps> oh, that was so close. Oh, that was so close. What is happening here? Oh, it's just the ground. We're on rocks. The ground is just misaligned is all. Okay. Okay, here we go. Turn the front end. All right, four wheel steering, activate. No! Oh, okay, no, I go down there. I'm like, I'm not getting up that vertical wall. I just came from up there. Okay, <laughs> I was really, <laughs> I, I thought I was done for a second, but no, I was just looking the wrong direction. All right, I gotta go, oh man. Ah! Ah, no! <laughs> no. <gasps> no! No! All right, that's one cone. Oh man, I cannot believe that. Oh, that was such a tight, like the cones were just the, almost the exact width of my vehicle and my vehicle's being tilted? What am I supposed to do with that? Alright, well, I might as well do the rest of this course just to see what this is even all about. What? Am I even going to be able to do the rest of this course? Okay, here we go. I'm just going. Just going for it. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. I am so disappointed at that cone. Well, I'm disappointed in myself about the cone. Okay. Here we go. What am I doing? Why am I just going across this? I didn't even like really check if I was lined up that well. Uh oh, I'm not lined up that well, am I? 
Did I ruin this? Uh-oh, did I ruin this run? I may have ruined this run. I'm gonna get another cone there, aren't I? All right, come on. Get past that cone. There we go. Wow, look at that recovery. All right, now what? Oh, this is kind of cool. See, this is such a good design. There are so many well-designed obstacles, like good rock climbing obstacles, or rock crawling obstacles. Okay, get around here. Yeah, you can't do this without four-wheel steering. That would be so hard. All right, and then this is the end. All right, where are the cones? Here we go. Yeah, this is a better view. I gotta go backwards. Backwards cam. I'm turning my four-wheel steering off right now. So my back wheels follow my front wheels better. There we go. And, oh, look at the glow bugs in their little habitat here. All right, open this up. All right, and look at that. That one cone. That part seems so hard to do without hitting the cones. Should I try it again? Should I try it again without hitting any cones? You know, I gotta complete it. I gotta actually complete the challenge. I'm gonna try again. Okay, take two. Uh, this time, I'm, I'm doing this until I get 100%. Probably gonna have to time lapse some of this. But I'm gonna try to do an uncut run for you guys, whether it's time lapsed or not. Uh, for 100%, no cone, no cone knocking over. No! Go, no, that one! No! No! This is the one. Back on top of the mountain. This is the hardest section with the, with the closest calls for making these turns without hitting these cones. Come on, get around this cone. Good, good. All right, here's this one again. I want to stay to the left, but be very careful. Yeah, all right, that one felt easy that time. Although it kind of felt like I, I was on the verge of flipping over, but not too bad. Oh my goodness, I almost just hit that cone. Okay, now I need to line myself up. This is the moment of truth. If I can get past this one, I think I'm in the clear. All right, this is it. Now I just gotta, I gotta get in position first. All right, now I just gotta maintain straight. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, don't mess anything else up. I don't remember anything about the rest of the cones. I just remembered stressing about that one. I didn't even like, I didn't even care about the rest of the cones because I already did one. All right, so now every other cone actually matters this time going to the end. Uh, okay. Go, go, go. Good. Oh, and I almost messed up on this part last time. Okay, I gotta really pay attention now. Things matter this run. All right, how do we do this? Like this? What's at the end? 
All right, as long as my wheels are on these, I should be okay at the end. All right, just go. I need speed to do this, I think. Okay. All right, all right, that was good. Went much better that time than the last time I made it through there. Okay, whoa, no, no, no. All right, last tunnel right here. Okay, here we go. Line up this way. Looking good. Here we are. Open the thing, did I win? Did I do it? How does the challenge complete? I don't see any red lights. I think I did it. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Finally. 543. That was really fast compared to my first run that I made it to the end. That one was like eight minutes or something. Man, what a beautifully designed challenge. Legitimately challenging, but didn't feel impossible. It almost felt impossible at one part, but then, you know, I figured out the strategy. But yeah, building my own vehicle was really, really fun. I'm super proud of how that thing works. But uh, if you don't want to build your own vehicle, you can still just try the course itself using this pre-made vehicle right here. So I will be leaving a link to it down in the description if you want to try it and try to get a better time than I did. So if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.